right, I'm the Flat Rate Master, and let's talk about shops losing money on this one thing. So what is it? It's testing, diagnostics, evaluations, whatever you want to call it. Most shops lose money on it. And we're talking independent shops. Dealer world is different, very different because warranty pay, all that stuff. So we're talking primarily independent shops. ASOG podcast recently changed their name to changing the industry podcast or something like that. They have a group associated with them on Facebook. You can look it up. But anyway, there's a lot of interesting conversations in that group. <laughs> I'm going to have lots of content for Monday videos from that group. Just FYI. Okay, for starters, the argument about flat rate isn't in this discussion. This is about shops losing money because they are. But you know, the argument that, that is put up in that group is you can't do diagnostics on flat rate. You have to have somebody on hourly salary, salary is illegal in most states. You have to have somebody that is not on the clock. Okay, just say I'm gonna let my personality shine a little bit on this one, but you got the YouTuber special it's been to 15 dealers, 7,000 independent shops, and I fixed it. So that car comes into your shop, it's doing whatever it was doing, and you're able to find the problem. But let's say, let's say it took your on hourly diagnostic guy four hours to find it. How much did you bill for? I'm asking a legitimate question because the problem is, is most of those shops probably did not bill enough. You know, I'm going to get a lot of comments about this and the thing, but the fact of the matter is, if it took you four hours to make profit on your diagnostic guy, you should have charged at least six. What do I mean by that? Well, in order for you to make profit on it, let's say that, that, Four hour diag was a broken wire in the harness. He found it, he repaired it, which what are you gonna charge for parts for that? Oh, uh, you know, heat shrink butt connector charge and you know, 20 minutes labor to actually do it or solder and you know, shop supplies charge. So you're making basically nothing on that job. Do you really think about what it cost you. You know, you've got a diagnostic guy that is probably the highest paid guy in the shop. He's hourly, so he's getting paid no matter whether he's doing that four hour nobody else could fix car or that 20 minute uh, O2 sensor heater fault code. You know, but think about it. He pulls in that car, he spends four hours. Chances are you're not even billing four hours, you're probably billing two hours. Let's be realistic here. You know, every diagnostic guy has gotten their butt kicked on a job. You know, diagnosing a car, you've gotten your butt kicked. It's part of the learning process. And part of the learning process is getting better at finding those problems, isolating the issue so you can narrow it down, find the problem and fix it. The better you are, generally, the faster you are at it. I'll give a simple example. Keith DeFazio did a video recently with a Jeep that was blowing the ASD fuse. When he said, when, as soon as I saw the engine, I knew exactly where the problem was. It was that simple. I've dealt with that thing so many times. Once the harness gets a little you know, old, it rubs on the back of the block, you get a short, boom, done, easy, peasy, lemon squeezy. But I digress. These shops that wanna be the heroes don't realize how little they're making on that very expensive tech. Think about it. You have, you know, if you're paying them correctly, you have a very expensive tech that is a huge chunk of your labor rate that you're not charging effectively for. And you know, this isn't about flat rate, but to think about it. Flat rate tech, he spends four hours on a car, 
he's going to want those four hours. He's going to be arguing that we should bill four hours. Hourly tech, he doesn't care what you bill because it's not his money. He got paid no matter what. But let's be realistic. Could a fly rate tech do that if he was getting paid? Yes. If he was not worried about, I got to figure this out in an hour, otherwise I'm not making any money. If the shop charged what they should charge and he made his four hours that he had in it, did he pick up any time? No. But did he lose any time? No. You know, we all have been there with those jobs if you're flat rate. Sometimes the job, you know, takes what it takes. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. That's flat rate. But anyway, we're not really talking about flat rate. The thing is, is that shop that Fix that magic car that nobody else could fix. It's a poor business model. It's as simple as that. It's literally a horrible business model. Oh, let's offer a service that nobody else can do and let's not charge for it. Now I know the argument will be, oh, we charge for it. You're not charging enough. The fact of the matter is every business guru out there will tell you, you need to charge more than it costs you. That's how business works. You are a for-profit business. So if your tech that you're paying hourly takes four hours, your profit is basically zero on that job. Yes, you made above whatever you paid that technician, but you did not make anything in addition to that. You didn't make any parts. You made literally, you know, a handful of dollars. Let's take that diag and let's go to the other side of it. That same diag guy in those four hours, instead of dealing with that nightmare car that had been everywhere. So let's say, let's just say for the sake of argument, Average diag for a standard diag, not a you know ultra complex been everywhere ticket, takes about a half hour. Generally, how long a, most diags take? They're not those nightmare cars. You know that includes proper testing, circuit testing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's let's use that O2 sensor heater fault code. How long does it take to unplug it? Load test the circuit for power and ground. Oh, guess what? You want to get even, even more fancy, you can resistance test the O2 sensor go, oh, well, I've got power to the O2 sensor. I've got an open heater in the, in the O2 sensor. Oh, wow, I, I've, I'm done. How long did that take? Now add that up over those four hours and let's see. In the end of it, you sold not only testing, but you sold an O2 sensor replacement. So you've got labor on that. You've got the part sale profit. And then you do that, oh, how many more times? Half hour per diag. Oh, how many, that's eight. Oh, wow. How much more money would you make if you were doing that? Not saying not to do those diags, but you have to charge an appropriate amount for your business to stay profitable. So just saying, again, not a flat rate argument. It's a business argument. If you're doing that kind of stuff, you're losing money. There is no way around it. You're not billing for your testing services. After all, you hired that hotshot guy. You're paying him buckets of money. You should make money on him not lose money. So hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Rate Master.